This is Mariam Abdullah, and I will discuss in this video pomegranates, its benefits, its historical timeline, its symbolism and cultures, and how it changed people's lives. To begin with, pomegranate is a very nutritious fruit, and this made it a very popular one. The outside part is a very leathery texture, might be orange or red, while the inside is filled with pink arrows with seeds that are juicy and sweet. However, there are many benefits in pomegranates, such as regenerating cells, protection from the sun, slow aging, curing anemia, producing youthful skin, and fighting cancer. Remarkably, pomegranate history is very rich. It was first discovered in 3500 to 2000 BC, the early Bronze Age. It is native from Iran and the Himalayas in northern India. Pomegranates were associated with fertility in ancient Persia in 600 to 700 BC, and it has been grown in the courtyards of the Zoroastrian temples since it remains green most of the year as a symbol of eternal life. In 485 to 465 BC, the Persian army carried the spears with pomegranates instead of spikes. However, people in Iran still appreciate the pomegranates as part of their culture and arrange a festival each year, assuring that they are proud of their history. Let's watch this short video from the Pomegranate Festival in Iran. We're glad you could join us for this edition of Iran. This week, we're amid a divine fruit known as Heaven's Ruby in our culture. From Iran's annual pomegranate festival, Salam. Welcome to Iran. Pomegranates are so special in the universe that they've been mentioned in the Holy Quran, the Bible, and in Islamic Hadith. They also take a leading role in Persian festivities. Behrus Najafi will unveil the divine properties of pomegranates. In Iran, you find an abundance of fruits and vegetables of all kinds. Some of these fruits have been intertwined with culture and tradition for ages, penetrating different aspects of Iranian life. The pomegranate has a special status in Iranian culture. Pomegranates originated from Iran in ancient times. The country is a large producer of pomegranates in the world, exporting the fruit to a number of countries. Now, according to the menu here, there are almost a dozen pomegranate products. So you can see a number of them here. The pomegranate juice, the seeds inside the fruit itself. You add some special spice here and some salt if you like. But this product, which is a pomegranate paste, it can be eaten like this or it can be, it can be added to food while cooking. There's also something very delicious, an English word for it, we call it lavoshak in Farsi. This is Ashraf Cultural Center in Easter Tehran. A special festival on pomegranates is going to take place in here officially within a few minutes. Stay with us and we'll show you around this special location. در فرهنگ ما جایگاه خاصی داره هم در فرهنگ دینی ما که در آیات و روایت زیادی از انار نام برده شده همینطور در ادبیات و شعر ما که انار جایگاه خاصی داره و مناسبت های زیادی مثل شب یلدا که مردم این سرزمین انار با فرهنگشون گره خورده This year tens of diplomats and ambassadors are attending the festival to better acquaint themselves with Iranian customs. The uh, uh, Iranian Cultural Authority are kind enough to invite all the embassies here uh, interested in Iranian culture. Uh, and, and I'm very much interested because, you know, home grade. 
is a very famous agricultural product in Iran. And uh, I understand that uh, they will show us uh, how culturally this uh, pomegranate is uh, uh, demonstrated in various aspects of Iranian life. With this kind of uh, our presence here and our learning, it's an opportunity for us to learn and see how much we can also, you know, develop a system in which one, besides just knowing that there is this a particular product, what are the expanded benefits of it within, for example, the medical uh, sphere or in agricultural sphere? Then, in 1600 BC, Egypt transferred the pomegranates to Syria during Hicks's ruling period. It was used in Pharaoh's residence. Pomegranate representations were found on Egyptian walls, symbolizing life after death, as King Tut took pomegranate vase into the afterlife with him. Later, in 957 BC, pomegranates were valued by Jews at Orshalim Solomon's temple and Jewish priests' robes were decorated with pomegranates, as well as Tura described the robes as, and beneath upon the hem of it thou shalt make pomegranates of blue and bells of gold between them round about the hem, thereof, and bells of gold between them round about a golden bell and a pomegranate, upon the hem of the robe round about. In 700 BC, pomegranates were introduced to Rome by the Carthage and married woman wore headdresses made of pomegranate twigs to signify their marital status. After that, pomegranates were valuable in Buddhism as in 563 to 483 BC, Buddha was camping in the kingdom of Bindusara when an old woman who traveled long distance to see him just to give him one small pomegranate. The Buddha rang the bell of honor in her name as he considered it the greatest gift. Moreover, pomegranates were mentioned in the Greek myths. In 500 BC, as Persephone, the daughter of Zeus and Demeter, was kidnapped by Hades, the lord of the underworld. He charmed her with a pomegranate, and when she ate it, she was linked to him. Demeter, the corn goddess, Broken-hearted prevented the earth from bearing fruits unless she sees Persephone. As a compromise, Zeus arranged that Persephone lives with Hades for one-third and with Demeter for two-thirds. Then it became a symbol of marriage stability. Afterward, in AD 50 to 85, the first Bible was printed and included elements of Torah and known as the Old Testament. It refers to pomegranate as it says, Let us go early to the vineyard to see. If the pomegranates are in bloom, there I will give you my love. Later, in AD 520, the Indian monk Pohidharma arrived to the school of Buddhism, Zen in China, where he gave the temple which was built in his honor its character by decorating it with pomegranates. Then, in AD 609 to 632, pomegranates were considered a precious fruit filled with nutrition by Prophet Muhammad, and he portrayed that it brings emotional and physical peace. The legend is that each pomegranate has one arrow descended from paradise. Following, in AD 1238 to 1358, Alhambra Palace was built in Granada, Spain. It was a piece of art, and pomegranates were part of the designs and mosaics. To add, in AD 1480 to 1502, pomegranates were represented in the Christian art as a symbol of resurrection and life after death. As Virgin Mary appeared in Pocilli, Raphael, and Lippi paintings holding a pomegranate. Then, in AD 1509 to 1547, Henry IV planted the first pomegranate tree in Britain. 
After that, in AD 1519, Maximilian II of Austria, the Roman Emperor, was shown in Cortes portrait holding a pomegranate like a monarch holding an orb. He adopted it as his personal badge. Later on, in AD 1521, the Spanish planted the first tree in the New World, Mexico, then transferred to California and Texas. In 1522 to 1562, the wife of Florence Duke was seen in many portraits wearing a dress shaped in a pomegranate design, and she used it to symbolize her role as a mother. Furthermore, a British explorer, George Vancouver, noted in his journal the abundance of pomegranate tree at Mission San Boventura in Ventura, California, in AD 1792. Then, Mr. Beers, who is a farmer, brought pomegranate cuttings to California from Florida, and planted them when he named the fruit with the wonderful variety, in AD 1896. Eventually, in AD 2000, Pomegranates are available all around the world and known for its sweet, tasty, and plentiful juice and benefits. However, it is clear that pomegranates have been through many stages and places, over plenty periodical stages, but in each culture it was differently symbolized. As in Islam, the Holy Quran describes it as each pomegranate contains one seed derived from heaven and pomegranates are considered one of the heaven fruits, whereas in Christianity, pomegranates were a symbol of resurrection and eternal life of Jesus, and the virgin and child paintings and statues were often including pomegranate. Undoubtedly, pomegranate changed people's lives over its time journey as how it was symbolized to them and how they used to use it, whereas some used to value it as a holy fruit such as in Buddhism, while others were considering it the tastiest and juicy fruit to eat, as Mr. Beers did. To sum up, pomegranate is a unique and tasty fruit. I couldn't find anyone who doesn't like it. What about you people? This is the end of my presentation. Thank you for your patience and attention.